hear you and me, and we have some habit and attitude which it can't be there. So when we come to this earth, Jesus Christ, I think we were celebrating about his resurrection. He went through that the same song. If we go to the Bible, a lot of big, big, big prophets, all of them, they went through the same thing. So you, when you are passing through, that means like you are frying meat. You need to boil it before you fry it and you get the taste. So God, sometimes, she went and passed through a lot of things before we can enter his kingdom. But in God's resolve, it leads you to repentance. That's a lot of those who doesn't know God. When they went through that, they, their life destroyed. You can testify, I can testify. Some people become addicted. Some people become, their life become miserable because they don't know God. But as a Christian, if you know you are God, in time of this, that you, 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 you near God in prayers. Because Bible said Jesus Christ, the time he told the disciples to go, when they went, Bible says he went about one yard or something to pray. And that time he saw what is going to happen, the sorrow. He was in sorrow and he prayed. Bible said he prayed and his sweat became like a cloud. You see, he was in the sorrow or pain. When we read Habakkuk 3, Habakkuk also went through the same thing. And he, he asked God, God, how long? How long? How long? How long? That's what he's saying. How long, God? And he said, even if he doesn't have, okay, let's create uh, uh, Habakkuk 362. What did uh, uh, Habakkuk say? 362. Me and you. We need to pass through the same sort of before we will be clean. Before God will use us for his own purpose. As I told you last two weeks, when I went through sorrow, it made me near God. It made me know how to go with him. It made me pray. It made me fast. Otherwise, I, I used to go to church, but all these things I'm not used to because if things are honky donkey, you, you don't bother. Because you are comfort zone. You don't care. So sometimes God sees you and the sorrow. So we make you near him. We make you rely on him. Paul went through the same thing. Yes, you were there. Yeah, mm -hmm. I heard and, and my heart pounded. He said he heard and he heart pounded. My lips quivered at the sound. He lips quivered at the sound. The K crept into my bones. Oh, the K cracked into his bones. And my legs trembled. His leg was trembled. Yeah, I will wait patiently for the day of calamity. Yes, he will wait the day of calamity. And to, what? To come on the nation invading us. He come on the nation to invade us. Though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, mm -hmm. though the olive crops fail, mm. Olive, olive crop fails and yes. the fields produce no food. Though there are no sheep in the sheepfold and no cattle in the stores, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Amen. I will be Amen. joyful in Amen. Amen. my sin. Amen. Anything go down that he said, it will not let him go down. He will rejoice in the Lord because the Lord is his strength. He knew that even all these passes God, God will give him another one. So you and me, in the time of that sorrow, in the time of that pain, don't let us curse God or backslide. Let's push on. Let's push on. Paul said it in the I think Second Corinthians chapter one verse eight to eleven. He said. They nearly die. They think their life is going to. But it let them put their trust in the Lord. And God rescued them. Praise the Lord. Amen. So it's not you and me. 
God will not rest here. A time of sorrow, a time of trouble, a time of pain. Get closer to the Lord. Get closer to Him. It's a time to set for prayers. It's time to set for fasting. Because that is the key. Otherwise, you cannot overcome it. My message, now I'm going on it. Chris, 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Uh, chapter 7, verse 1. Going. Therefore, mm. since we have these promises, dear yeah. friends, mm. let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. Amen. Stop. I'm coming. Bible is telling you and me today, since we have this promise, what promise do we have? We promise that Jesus says he will never leave us or forsake us. He left his throne. Last week we are celebrating here. The resurrection of the Lord. Death couldn't hold him. So you and me, he didn't leave us orphans. If God could allow a uh, death couldn't hold him in the grave and he resurrected, that means you have chance. He's alive. So what else can he not do for you? So he said, let us throw everything, everything that makes us sin in the body to be holy. Sanctify yourself and purify yourself so that God can use you for his purpose. Because his kingdom, he said, he wants those who are what? Mock. And you, you, don't, you are not weak. You are proud. So how can we enter the country? The beatitude, what did he say? Somebody who seeks for righteousness. Did you and me, we are seeking for that righteousness? So how can we be in that kingdom? A poor in the spirit. And you and me, are we poor in the spirit? Hallelujah. Amen. Even this country, they have law that when you come here, you don't marry their woman, you don't have papers. Isn't it? Nobody can change it and it's still pending. You can stay here 100 years and not marry. They will not give you. But immediately you marry, they give you the paper. That's God's kingdom. He said, righteousness. And if you are not meek, poor in the spirit. And if they hate you because of his name. But you, if somebody hates you, say a, a, a little one word, you are, you are hard tremble. And you are hard say, oh, I'm not going to that church anymore because somebody has said this, somebody has said it. But he said, if somebody, because of his name, if you are doing the will of God and somebody accuses you, I told my wife yesterday, I said, Me, if I'm doing wrong thing, that's a shake. But if I know what I'm doing is right, I don't care what you do for me. What can you do for me? You can't beat me. I said it. That's you. That's the kingdom of God. If you are doing the purpose of God, don't fear. Whether they kill you, disciples, what did they do to them? None of them, except only John, who didn't die. All of them, they die, but they know where they are going. So they don't care about what you do with the body. Jesus Christ said, you shouldn't fear who will kill the body, but the soul. So the soul is important. What you and me, we need to work towards it, not this body. This body is to root and go, go and see. <laughs> Even back, when you face back, try to, to do this. Practice a word and, and smell it. You see how you are going to use it. Let me tell you one thing. Just bath with a, a cream soap. After bathing, put your hand, do this, do this, do this, and smell it. The, it's still. It's the armpit. It's a waste one. Armpit. Thank you, Mama. So, so, this body, if you let this body deceive you, you are nothing. The soul, the body, God needs the soul. So, don't think of what human being will do your body. Seek him first. Because all me and you up and down going, people telling rubbish to us, is because of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. But if we don't do what he requires us to be that kingdom, 
Then we are pitiful for a sports team. That means we, we are have nothing, nothing. Maybe, excuse me, she said the one pound we put in the oven, we can buy uh, chicken and chips. <laughs> but you come and put it here. So make effort and God will help you. He helps those who help themselves. If you sitting on your side and stay, you are the same. To be born again, to let the old service back and take the new. Why the new? The new Christ said, what should we do? That's the important. Chris, let go. Don't let the sorrow or pain you are going to let you be what you don't want to be. Amen. Amen. Verse 2. Paul's joy over the church's repentance. Mm. Make room in, for us in your hearts. Make room today. I'm telling you the word of Christ. Said, make room in your heart so that the word we preach here will penetrate. Amen. I can't kick you. Or I can't put it there except to make room. Paul is telling to them today. I'm telling to you, make room. As Pastor said, we are one body. Let us unite. Let us be bargain, be bargain, and push forward and know Christ more. That's my goal. Why we are here? Why a person like me standing in front of you? Think of that. You know me. We all started together. If now I can stand here and tell you something, that means. God is with us. So let us back on the Bible and build the church. Nothing, nothing. God said he will build the church. Even if it's true, it's pleasing God. That is important. And we have the word. That is important. Not but there's no word. As my brother is doing. It's very good because always, every week, we, we, we can say one word, what we learned last week. That means it's, we are growing. That the maturity. Praise the Lord. We thank God. You see, if you allow yourself, the Spirit teach you. The Spirit that teach him and bring this. First, did we do this? We don't. But now, gradually, we take it bit by bit and we are up. So don't be that I don't have that. You have something in you. Praise the Lord. Go on. We have wronged no one. We haven't wronged no one. We have corrupted no one. We haven't corrupted no one. We have exploited no one. We don't exploit no one. I do not say this to condemn you. I am not saying that to condemn you. I have said before that you have such a place in our hearts that hallelujah, we hallelujah. live or die with you. Yes. I have spoken to you with great frankness. Oh, hallelujah. Until Listen to my word properly and from now on change because. I'm not here for money. Pastor is not here for money. All we need is the child growing up and you and me happy in the Lord. God called us here to let you know him. To take you because we are the shepherd. So we need to shepherd you and know what is good and what is right uh, wrong. So bear he said, you are in our heart. Then we pray. Anybody have problem, we have it. Because we need to know everybody is sound man and happy. It's not about money. Me, I don't think of money, money, money. I think of healthy and no more God. That's all. Because heaven, there's no money there. That's the heaven we want to go, the kingdom. So if our lifestyle is good in God, that's all I need. God help us to get our praise, we will be happy. Simple. And prophet didn't work in vain. And the, the word of Christ church is still standing. That's my prayer. So God should unite us and move on. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. I take great pride in you. <coughs> I am greatly encouraged. Yes. In all our troubles, my joy knows no bounds. No bounds, because all the time we have people here to worship God. Zoom, we have people there. So we are doing better. That is encouragement. So we are happy. Every day, we go and meet some of senior brother call me, oh, this, this, this is a heavy. I saw this. Oh, I said, oh, let's pray about it. He said, oh, let's pray about it. We can't do nothing. All we know is 
prayers. But if you don't open your heart, how the prayers work? It's not like I'm holding it and I'm going to give you to my name. Set it here. It's God. I mean, God searching the heart and know what is in. So if you don't open it, how can God bless you? Praise the Lord. I'm talking to somebody. Please, let us take everything in our heart and wash our hands and let the spirit move. Go on. For when we came to, into Macedonia, mm. we had no rest. Yes. But we were harassed at every time. Everywhere. Conflicts on the outside. Outside and inside. Fears within. Oh, yes. But God, who comforts the downcast, yes. comforted us. God, who comforts the downcast, will comfort you. By, the, co by the coming of Titus. By the coming of Titus, yes. And not only by his coming. Not only by his coming, but what? But also by the comfort you had given him. Mm, yes. He told us mm. about your longing for me, yeah. your deep sorrow, mm. your ardent concern for me, so that my joy was greater than ever. Mm. Even if I caused you sorrow yes. by my letter, now I, do I'm not coming regret to it. I do not regret it. Mm. Though I didn't though I did regret it, I see that my letter hurt you, but only for a little while. Yet now I am happy, not because you were made sorry. But because your sorrow led you to repentance. Chris, stop there. <laughs> you see, when we hear the word and it pinch you, don't go home and call somebody and say, oh, the pastor said this, or this one said this. He said, he, he was not in regret that the letter he told, he had them. But he's happy that they took it and lead them to repentance. Mm -hmm. This is how we go to church. So if you come and I stand here, Pastor Pierre standing here, anybody who stands here and say the word, and you know the word, that the word is in you, thinking you, that means God is talking to you. Mm -hmm. So we go home and we pray, God help me. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is Christianity. Don't go home and call somebody and say, the pastor is talking about me. Did the pastor know? Mm -hmm. Or he have heard something. It's the word. So the word wants you to, to know that there is something you need to change or there's something you need to transform you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So Paul said he is not regret that he sent that letter to them. Because what they are doing was not Christianity. So he had sorted them and equipped them. And he said he's happy because they were sorrowful. But when they heard that letter and they sat down, it lead them to repentance. Amen. So what they were doing, they stop mm -hmm. and take the way of righteousness. This is born again. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Amen. So the word of Christ church, let's take this word. No matter how we are sorrowful, no matter why anybody of us step on your toe, don't, don't retaliate or don't call somebody because when you call somebody, the person also an idea will, will, will boil you up. But if you come down and pray over it, and later you ask the person, maybe he doesn't think what he said is offended. And you become cool. Even marriage, the same thing. Sometimes a word will come, bam! And the person, if he didn't retaliate and he cooled down, <laughs> later you sort your differences. Amen. But if the person also starts to retaliate, it become fat and fat. And the worst will be more. Hallelujah. So that it will go further. If God didn't come in, somebody will come and sit down and settle the case. But a simple thing. That's why Bible said the tongue. This one is a fire. If you don't know today, I'm telling you, it's fire. Nobody can control it. If it started, it will burn all of us here. <laughs> but if you have God, God, He only can tell you that tongue. So in prayers, you tell Him, God. Habakkuk cried. He said, Why, 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 God? But He was agony. Jesus cried also the same thing. He said, Father, Father, why are you for taking me? That time He was in sorrow. So you and me, we passed through it. But it leads us to repentance. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.
to whatever you are facing today. Whatever is in you today, today I'm showing you that don't keep up. Amen. You are in the right channel. Don't keep up. Just keep on praying. Don't stop praying. Prayer is the key. Nothing you can do. You can't help yourself. Jesus said, nobody, nobody can put one COVID in his heart. <coughs> and it's true. Can you do that? And when you think of it and worry about it, can you solve it? You can't. So today, I'm telling you, it's prayers. That is the key. Call upon the Lord. He will not take his eyes upon you. He will help you. That's why Jesus said, take his yoke. You know, the yoke, when you see, uh, what, what should I explain it? Camel. Yeah, they carry it here and carry it there. So it's not your load. So both of you, you, you carry it. That's what Jesus Christ is about. So if you take his yoke, then both of you always you go with him. He tell you what to do. You pray and he strengthens you. The joy of the Lord is our strength. So if you rely on him, he gives you the ability. He will give you the uh, uh, knowledge to handle that case. It's simple. Mm. But sometimes we lean on our own understanding and we take the power. After that, then if you couldn't solve it, then we come to Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. Do you know, this one, we know how to sing. Sometimes I don't know how to sing. Pray with me. What a privilege to cry. Yes. But I said, so now I don't trust nobody in my life. 
like to be a Christian friend. No. Mm. Because somebody, when we, pray, we, we are in the same church, after Sunday, I will take them to talk about Ghana. You see, the money is there, so I don't care. I buy them cool, fufu, everybody enjoy it. Sometimes they come to my house, we cook dollar of rice. But you see, when I was in sorrow, in, instead of this guy to comfort me, he was talking behind me. So today I'm telling you, if you don't put your trust and somebody tell you about God and stop church, you are deceiving yourself. The time you need a person, you will close the door. So it's only Jesus. That's why we sing that song. It's only the friend we have. Take everything to him in prayers. If he didn't spare his life and he came to die for you and me, what else cannot he do? We see the cross. He was agony. It's not easy. But he bear it because of you and me. So nothing you go on your knees to him, he will not help. So let us rely on him. Not anybody. Human being who, he said a cat is a somebody who put a, 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 a trust in a human being. Because he know human being. But we said he said he know what is in them. So he didn't rely on them because he know. Because the food they were eating. Oh, but that day they said crucify him. <laughs> Let me tell you today. The same people he feed them. They said, leave Barnaba and crucify Jesus. What have Jesus done? Praise the Lord. So if you put your trust on your manager or your boss or your, uh, nothing, I always said, even my boss, closer friend, he deceived me. You understand? So now I, I learned a lot of things in this world. So all my only my friend is Jesus Christ. So everything I'm facing, I go to my knees and tell him, Father, I'm not going. Sometimes when you pray, set prayers, you feel like you feel happy in inside, not outside, but inside you have joy. Because God is God. Amen. He passed through that. So he know how to help us. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. For you became sorrowful, sorrowful as yes. God intended, mm. and so were not harmed in any way by us. Yes. Godly sorrow brings repentance. Mm. That leads to salvation and leaves no regret. But worldly sorrow brings death. Hallelujah. Worldly sorrow brings death. So be careful. It's true. If you go through when this solo, the death you will face. But God this solo leads you to repentance and the salvation God wants you to have. Because all of us, that's what we need. So after solo, after the painful, then it will take you to repentance. Then you stop something in your life and then the salvation for you. Amen. Amen. Don't let it lead you to worthy one. But the godly one is good. Amen. Amen. Chris, let's go. See what this see what this godly sorrow has produced in you. Mm. What earnestness. Yeah. What eagerness to clear yourselves. Mm -hmm. What indignation, mm. what alarm, yeah. what longing, mm. what concern, what readiness to see justice done. At every point you have proved yourself to be innocent in this matter. So even though I wrote to you, it was neither on account of the one who did the wrong, nor on the account of the injured party. Rather that before God you could see for yourselves how devoted to us you are. By by all this, we are encouraged. Yes, by all this, you and me, we are encouraged. So, when you went through all this, Paul is asking you me, and me, what did we get inside? It leads us to justice. It leads us to justice. 
to the true Saint Esprit. No more lies. No more bati bati. No more masio masio. No more matu matu. But it leads us to justice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's right. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Yes. So uh, you are always saying the truth will set you free. The truth is set you free. But even when you lie and you see the person, see how, how you feel. Me, me, I notice it. But if it's true, you are saying, you don't know forget whether he's coming or not coming. Because it's the truth. <laughs> it's not diluted. As God word. I always said to my pastor, I said, we, we are not educated, but the word, we don't dilute it. We speak what God has given us. I'm not coming to stand here and tell you, oh, tomorrow we are going to get million. Oh, this, no, no. God said, the word, listen, and it takes you free. So if you hear the word, I'm telling you, and you take the body list and add it to yours. It sets you free. Mm -hmm. So it's not diluted. It's clean. What is in the Bible applies to you. As Paul said, what I receive, I give it to you. So Jesus Christ, one thing I noticed that he didn't tell us that in the cross, but he said, You should remember what? The day at the Sabbath. That's what he said in the remember. Yeah. He took off. I said, do this for remembrance of you. He didn't tell us we should remember where he was in the cross. But the communion. So you and me to drink and eat with him. That is important to him. So when we get that time to eat and drink and communion, me and you, we are one body. So the one body we edify him Hallelujah. and we glorify him. Yes. Hallelujah! Yeah. It's not Pastor Kati, mm. it's not Sister Tina, it's not Maruti for all of us. We are one body. So we celebrate. That's what he needs us for. So let's lay everything aside. He said we should purify our heart and sanctify ourselves and be holy and join together one need. Amen. 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 Go on. In addition mm. to our own encouragement, we were especially delighted to see how happy Titus was. Yeah. Because his spirit has been re refreshed by all of you. I have boasted to him about you, and you have not embarrassed him. <coughs> but just as everything we said to you was true, so our boasting about you to Titus has proved to be true as well. Mm. And his affection for you is all the greater when he remembers that you were all obedient, receiving him with fear and trembling. Yes. I'm glad I can have complete confidence in you. In you, yes. That is the word of God. To receive him like a God himself. To do his will. The word we preach to you, you take it and be obedient to it. Not look or do otherwise, but rather to do what he asks us for. God is merciful. He will never leave us or forsake us. In all things, let's be glad. Let this sorrow lead us to repentance, and the repentance will take us to salvation. That is the word of God, uh, Chris. Let's go to Luke 22, 39, going. Luke 22, 39. Mm -hmm. Jesus prays on the Mount of Olives. Yes. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, mm -hmm. and his disciples followed him. Yeah. On reaching the place, mm -hmm. he said to them, yeah. Pray that you will not fall into temptation. You see, Jesus Christ knew. He said, We should not sleep and fall into temptation. Because without the prayers, we will fall to temptation. The devil always roaring like a lion to see somebody to devour. 
So always you should be alert. Go on. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, mm. knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Amen, 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 amen. You see, that is the dying point. Jesus saw what is going to happen to him. But he said, it's not his will. So today I'm telling you, whatever is going through your mind, whatever sorrow you are facing, whatever painful you are facing, don't live on your own understanding. But give it to him. He said, Father, not my will, but thou will be done. So you also, that is your prayers. My also, that's my prayers. Because my will will lead me to destruction. My will will give, give me another stage. But if the will of God take you, it will lead you to prosperous. It will have a good life in you. You will never stumble. Because he will lead you where you are supposed to go. Because sometimes we, we pray a mess, we do something, but we don't get it. But if you tell the Father that I will be done, Jesus Christ will be done. His will is to glorify him. That's why he said we should remember when we drink communion, what he came and do for you and me. Because he came to set us free. The devil scream. The devil who has punished us and put us in a cave. Jesus Christ came and released us. So you and me, we can cry Abba, Father. That's why he said we should remember. Because he did a good job for you and me. Otherwise, we will be, we are like sheep. We don't have a shepherd. But Jesus Christ has come as a shepherd. Has come gone. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was like drops of blood falling on the ground, falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer and went back to his disciples, he found them asleep exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? He asked him. Get up and pray, so that you will not fall into temptation. Amen. 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 You see, he repeated that twice. Bible said when he was anguished, he prayed. He prayed. He never stopped praying. He was anguished like you and me. Sometimes uh, the birds, sometimes the food we will eat, even the work, a lot of things distress. We are an agony. Let's give it to God. He said, we don't think of what we eat tomorrow, but we think what we eat today. We leave the rest of him. He is the provider. Sometimes I think the money we earn, the best we pay, and the food we eat, where do we get the money from? But God provides for us. Every time the little, he blesses. He sustained it to another man. So think of that. That's why he said we shouldn't think of tomorrow. The day, what we eat. You will struggle, 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 but at the end, you can see that you have something to wear. That's God we said. Don't give up. Don't let your sorrow lead you to the worldly death, but in the godly manner. Praise Him. Everything. Go on your knees and tell him because he's more than able to do it. That's why he left his throne and come here. Chris, let's go Isaiah 53. The Old Testament. Something there. Isaiah 53 verse 3 mm -hmm. He was despised and rejected by mankind a man of suffering and familiar with pain like one from whom people hide their faces he was despised and we held him in low esteem surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering yet we considered him punished by God stricken by him and afflicted but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and 
by his wounds we were healed. Amen. Amen. You see, that time you look at him, that God has rejected him. God has left him to the mankind. But the Bible said it's because of you and me. He went through this to save us. So no matter sorrow you are facing, the Bible said he's able. He's able. He's able. Because his straps, the beating they are beating, that got you and me our head. It will hit us. So the sorrow, anything you are facing, don't face it alone. You look upon him and he will help you. Don't be this man that all this thing he went through because of what? Because of you and me. So don't let your sorrow let you to the worldly sorrow and then you face your death. But let godly sorrow bring to repentance. Then what I'm doing, what I know that is not a biblical, you should take it aside and do the will of God because that is what God called us for. He called us here for a purpose, to know him, to glorify him. Our body, like Paul said, is bear a mark of Christ. So you also can say you bear a mark of Christ. People will know you and glorify God. Your attitude, your habit, what you do, what to help people, what to arm you give. Somebody will say and he will thank God. So God will be happy that his child is doing what he requires him to do or help to do. So let bear the mark of Christ. Then it will help us. Mm. Christ, let's go to Matthew 26, 36. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, mm. and he said to them, yes. "Sit here while I go over there and mm. pray." Yes. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and to began to, began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, "My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death." Stay here and watch, and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, there he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found, and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, you, you may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them asleep because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed a third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Amen, amen. It's okay. You see, Jesus and the disciples, why did he took all three of them? Because they were close to him. He said, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ went through sorrow. So she can take you and me out of it. But the sorrow, Bible said, he didn't give up. He prayed. So you and me, that's the only thing I need today. That in a time of our trouble, pain, sorrow, we should go on our knees and pray to him. There's nobody can help you. Nobody, I'm telling you. I'm not lying. Nobody. 
but go on your knees and pray. Jesus Christ did the same thing. He said, Father, Father, it is possible may this cup be taken from me. For not as I will, but as you will. So you also tell him, because sometimes the sorrow is, is coming to you, it leads you to something. So you check yourself. That's why he said, if it is not possible to take it away, let it done. And the father knows it is not possible to take it away because that is his mission. So you are me, the same thing. Maybe it is equipping you to know the way. Sometimes when you take the Bible, the devil will let you sleep. When you want to pray, he will let you sleep. When you want to fast, the hungry that day you will be very hungry. Oh. But when the distress comes, let him tell you, he will make you closer to God. So sometimes it, it equips us and it leads us to repentance. So not all we blame the devil, as Pastor said every time. Sometimes God wants us to be who He wants us to be. Because sometimes we sleep too much. Sometimes we eat too much. Sometimes we don't have time for Him. So when they squeeze you, you get closer to Him. And then He will help you. The matchup is working towards His salvation. So don't give up. Oh, why me? I'm going to church. I'm paying my tithes. I'm paying offering. I'm praying, and this has happened to me. You want it to happen to a tree? <laughs> it's human being. We are as Job said. We are born for what? Trouble. So the trouble will not cease. Me and you, we will face it until the day God will call us. But you are trouble. You are stress. You are sorrow. What did you do? Get closer to him. He had the key. When he lock it, nobody can open it. When he open it, no one can lock it. Chris, let me finish here. Let me go uh, Second Corinthians chapter one, verse eight to eleven. Paul, Paul went through something. I mean, I said that before, and God took him out of that because they lied that God can save them. Amen. So the same thing, you and me, we should. <coughs> Second Corinthians chapter one verse eight. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters. He said he wanted us to not be informed mm -hmm. about the troubles we experienced. About the trouble they experienced in the province of Asia. In the province of Asia. We were under great pressure. They were under great pressure. Far beyond our ability. Far beyond. Ability to and ability to help themselves so that we despaired of life itself. See, they despaired that their life is gone. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death. Yes, but because they are facing the death. But no hope. Oh, as you sitting down, I'm standing here. Sometimes you feel the same thing and you think there's no hope for us and there's no run away. But but I show you there's somebody who is our uncle. Go on. But this happened. This happened that we might not rely on ourselves, yes. but on God. Yes, you see. Raises the dead. God let this happen so they will not rely on ourselves. That our knowledge, technology coming this now, the word, all everything, they think they know everything. He said it happened. That they will not rely on themselves. This pandemic, there's a lot of machines, but we have <coughs> tried, 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 up to now, it hasn't gone. It's still working. Go on. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril. Then God delivered them from just a deadly peril. Yes. And He will deliver us again. And He will deliver us again. On Him we have set our hope. To Only him, you and me, we should set our hope that he will continue to deliver us. As you help us with by your prayers. As you and me, we help ourselves with prayers. I always said, if you went through that, you can call me, you can call pastor. He said, 
two together in one team we will do it we help you in prayers we, we are here for that we will help you in prayers so don't take it yourself and uh, be dumb or to be moody and don't have happy in you because the Satan does his work so if we, we met together and we put on prayers God will answer you and me Amen. 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 Amen.